Hey guys, this is Hannah and this is Bookworms Talk. And today we're going to talk about Gabriel Inferno by Sylvain Renard. Favorite book I've ever read. Ever. I mean, it's forbidden love in a modern sense. And in Gabriel's words, he is a magnet for sin and she is a magnet for mishap. Good. I cannot stress enough how beautiful it is, and you really, really, really should read it. So a synopsis for this book. So we start off, and Julia, she goes to take a class at the University of Toronto to study Dante, and she's going for her master's. And the professor is Gabriel Emerson, and she knows him from her past, but I can't tell you anything about that yet. To put it lightly, in class, when he sees her, he is a complete jackass. And she remembers him, and he just doesn't even know who she is. And uh, she's just all meek and adorable and like a bunny or a kitten. And she's all, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. She's adorable. Ugh. He's like, talk to me after class all, ah. And she waits outside the door because she hears him on the phone, getting notified that his mother had just died, his adoptive mother, which was Julia's best friend's mother. And that is who she saw as her mother. And eventually we get to the point where they're together and because he is her professor and she is his student of uh, fraternization did i say that right and i didn't want to give you guys too much of a summary because i don't want to give anything away because you read through the present and then there's one spot where you get thrown into the past where you know what's in julia's head how will they know each other and i don't want to tell you guys about that because it's honestly the most beautiful scene I have read in I can't even remember when. So that's all the hints I'm gonna give you because I will spoil you guys with all of the beautiful mist that is Gabriel's Inferno. Every time something embarrassing happened to Julia, I'm just like, let me die for you, okay? It's just, uh. There was one point when he called Harvard and that made me realize that he is an ass a lot of the time, but he has a beautiful heart. And that's when you know shit's gotten really bad when you start quoting Lady Macbeth. Oh, <laughs> jealous Gabriel. Fun stuff. I loved at the beginning how Gabriel was saying that she was like this rose and that she bloomed under kindness and she withered under hatred. And early on, I saw a reoccurring quote series thing that would happen. And I made a list of them. Then I'm glad I'm your first. Angel fucker, you'll catch pneumonia and die. Does this please you? And we get the flashback where they're in the apple orchard, the beautiful apple orchard, and that scene is magical. Oh my god, it was like a midsummer night stream in my head. I'm glad I'm your first hand to hold. I'm glad I'm your fir the first boy to kiss you. And then just fell asleep under the stars. And then just, it, that, that, that's it. And now we're back in the present. We're like, how does he not remember her? Okay, yeah, he's drunk, but really, you don't remember anything. She didn't even look familiar. I was like, okay, so she's basically Anastasia Steele and he's Christian Grey. Got it. It literally was a retelling of Fifty Shades. Oh, oh, oh yeah. And she was like biting her lip and stumbling in his office and drinking tea and being all innocent. Are you serious? Right now, are you serious? But this is better than Fifty Shades. This book is beautifully written. She's using every excuse to draw lines about these damn apples. But you won't remember the apple orchard. And it's just like, remember! The page he remembered. Oh my god. After she took care of him after the lobby, and he remembered. He saw it, and they, he remembered. And we're just like, things are going to start going in a positive way. This is good. But of course not. It can't stay that way. She leaves this note for him, and it says, now your blessing disappears. You're Beatrice. He's like, why did you sign the note the way you did? Because it was Beatrice. And she's just like, fuck it. Fuck it, really. And she's trying to leave. And he's like, hallucinations don't come looking for you. And then he entertained the idea that what if Beatrice wasn't a hallucination? She came to look for me in hell because that's what Beatrice did for Dante. And he remembers. And I'm like, how can you not accept his apologies? I mean, he's groveling. When she decided to write him an email about harassing her, I was, that did not just happen. What? Why are you? No. Gabriel from the apple orchard. Give it a chance. You didn't even, he just remembered and you totally pushed him away. When she went to his seminar right after that whole long fight, and I love their argument then with the third person back and forth, he's Dante, she's Beatrice kind of thing that we caught on to. That was my favorite part in the book next to the apple orchard. And then at one point he threw lobbies in there and then she was like, Paulina, his supposed mistress, 
and I'm like, oh my god, someone's gonna call you on it, you guys. Other people know what you're talking about, too. I knew this one quote way before this book. Abandon all hope, ye who enter here. And when she went into his office after that whole seminar, she's like, abandon all hope, ye who enter here. And that was really funny. When Gabe was like, I could kill him for crushing your spirit. I'm just like, no, no, I'm finished now. When Gabriel asked about Simon, and she told him, and when she finished, he said, you would be a virgin even if he had forced you. You would still be a virgin to me. I'm like, nope, nope, can't handle this. Nope, nope, I'm just... I quit from life. So when they went home for Thanksgiving and Scott was like, Professor Emerson, that must be a turn on. Do your women call you that too? Must be really hot in the bedroom. <sighs> Scott, what did you just do? So they're going back to the orchard and I'm just like, I'm sorry. Screw the patronization. What better opportunity? It's the orchard. That's where it was meant to happen. It, then Simon and Gabriel saved her, but then she had all these murmurings after it, and they were like, I cheated on you, I'm so sorry, and apologizing for herself and how it's her fault, but it's not, and God, and we were in Gabriel's head, and that was so, oh my God. And then in the hospital, when Gabriel was arguing with her father, because it was her father's fault that this happened, and it really was, and he told him how much of a shitty father he was, and I was like, it was all the things that Julia could never tell him. Oh, Maya, I was dead set on it being his mother, but I, I was really wrong. It was his dead daughter. That whole scene with Paulina, and her argument with that was beautiful because she was saying, it isn't an eye for an eye, and you saved me. I was Tom's baby girl. That is penance for you then. And her argument was flawless. No, you know, he had to get sterilized so he would never abandon another child again. You were 20-something, 30 maybe. Like, really? You thought that, though? You, that was not a good idea. I came to the point when he would call her love, but he couldn't say, I love you. And then on the plane, he keeps hearing this thing in his head, and he's like, what is that? And I'm like, that's your subconscious, and it's saying that you love her. Correction, not your subconscious, your inner goddess! I couldn't pass that up, guys. And then when they're in Florence, and I'm like, you would play this ame mucho. Foreplay almost made it awkward. Yeah, I actually said that. It was really extravagant in a way that I'm just like, is this all necessary? No, I should be on top, you should be like this fight over. I'm like, stop talking, just stop talking. I'm so glad that he said this. He's like, I'm glad I'm your first. And then the last three words in the book, she was loved. And I was just like staring with my happy face on and I just was so, I, yeah, yeah. This book was beautiful and flawless and perfect, and I don't say that a book is ever perfect or flawless, but I honestly think that this one was. I love this book so much, and his brown-eyed angel, and he would talk about her like a bunny and a kitty, the tiger thing was weird, but everything else was sweet, and he talked about her like a rose, and it was adorable, and oh. Um, I pretty much lived on Google Translate, that's kind of what made it take longer than it would have. They would have these phrases, or they would have these things in Italian mythology, like paintings and sculptures and whatnot, and I would want to know what's going on. I want to understand the comparison, and I am really, really entranced in the whole Beatrice and Dante thing. It's been lots of fun, guys. I hope to see you next time on Bookworms Talk. So if there are any quotes that you especially liked, let me know which ones are your favorite. I've always had a terrible weakness for beautiful but sad things. And Gabriel left him a note, and it said, If I have a soul, it's yours. Not all scars are skin deep. Being without you, Julianne, is like enduring an endless night without stars. Why should I become like her? Why not think that sometimes, just sometimes, you can overcome evil with silence and let people hear their hatefulness in their own ears without distraction? Maybe goodness is enough to expose evil for what it really is sometimes, rather than trying to stop evil with more evil. You're my first kiss, I fell asleep with your arms, your precious apple orange, oh my god. Thank you for making everything beautiful just by being. He's like, I don't believe in fairy tales. And he's like, I'd like to make you believe. <laughs> really? You could have had me in the orchard. I would have let you. <laughs> that part, that part, that part. For tonight, he would be Beowulf instead of Dante, warrior instead of poet. He would carry his sword unsheathed in his hand, and he would slay Grendel and all of his relatives if, who even looked in the direction of his precious charges. If I am the darkness, you are the stars. It's difficult to know what's worse, being hit or being ignored. 
I guess it depends on what kind of pain you prefer. Scars might heal, and we might forget about them, but they're permanent. Real isn't what you are, it's something that happens. Now your blessed disappears. So that's all the quotes that I have. I'm sure there are plenty, plenty more. And if there are any that you liked that I haven't said, also let me know. I don't want to miss a single one of them. So yeah, I'll see you guys later. Bye! I have a funny story, guys. Real fast. So have you, if you guys have seen White Chicks, you know who Terrell is, and he's this really huge guy, and he's just like, careful with my wet chillax, she might melt. And every time Gabriel would watch Julia drink wine or eat food, and I would hear Terrell's voice in my head as Gabriel's, and I could not, for the life of me, read that scene seriously. It's just really weird. The one thing this book taught me, the best conversations happen at 3 in the morning. Yeah, really they do.